In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I was preparing for this Mass, I found it striking that the readings are about mercy, and the antiphons are about God's power. So somehow we must put these two things together. These are not normally things in the human realm that we join. We don't often join power and mercy. And not just mercy in this case, but pure and simple, complete and total clemency. The debtor is completely forgiven his debts for no reason except for the fact that he can't pay his debts. That's not mercy, that's clemency. That's even beyond mercy. And all the antiphons are speaking about the power of God. So what we are to take away by this Mass that we celebrate today is that the most powerful act of God, even in some ways greater than the act of creation itself, is the forgiveness that he offers us. the completely unmerited and gratuitous gift that is his love and his desire to bring us to him. See, that's what this is all about. We, give, we forgive a debtor so that he's back on equal par. And he's not ahead and he's not below anymore. He's now free. Someone who has not debt is free. Hopefully a few of you in here know what that feels like, doubtfully, in our, in our current economic system, which is, runs on debt. Uh, if it's not credit cards, it's mortgages. If it's not mortgages, it's something else. And you know, if you have to write that check for your mortgage, you know you're not free yet. I remember the day I was in the kitchen with my grandmother, the day she wrote the last check that she had to pay on her mortgage. I don't think I had ever seen her more happy in my entire life because she was free. And this is what our God is offering us in the act of forgiveness, freedom. But freedom to do what? Freedom does not mean that we get to do whatever we want. Because sometimes what we want to do isn't the best thing to do. But rather, it is freedom to do something. Or I'd rather put it, freedom to be something. Freedom to be a true and faithful child of God. Unencumbered by the cares, strife, and turmoil that surround us in our day-to-day -day life. This is the peace that we see in the saints. The saints have a profound peace about things. The world is crashing down, and they're at peace. I think of St. Augustine. This is the great image to me of, of a Christian the end of his life, in his library, dying, a holy, pious man at peace, while the barbarians are invading, raising, destroying, and ransacking Rome. The end of his civilization came as he was dying, but he cared not, because he had the one thing necessary complete and total possession of that freedom won by giving over your will completely and totally to God. That is freedom. And this is distinguished from liberty. Liberty is the, be, is the ability to freely determine your course in life. 
But as Christians, we're never free to determine our course in life in every way. God is our guide. The gospel is our measure. And while the gospel itself is not bound, we are bound by the gospel. But it is a binding that brings about that true freedom of the Spirit, that freedom that each and every one of our souls desires, because it's the freedom of rest and peace, consolation, harmony and joy. To finally enter into that very thing that we are made for, which is the uncompromising, unparalleled, incomparable love of God. To be fully enveloped in that. And to express it in our life day by day by day. At every moment. Giving thanksgiving constantly to God for the gifts that he has given us. And it's also for the purpose of living that life now. Not just thinking nice thoughts about it. But wouldn't it be nice to have that sort of freedom? Wouldn't it be nice to have that sort of peace? Wouldn't it be nice to have that sort of joy? But no, to actually live it, to instantiate it in our hearts. And the way we do this is by faith. We are able to see more clearly what is most important in our life. It's to order our loves properly. And this is a moment of recollection for all of us. Daily, take the time every evening and say, have I ordered my loves properly? Have I put things first that belong in first place? Is God the center of my life? Is he the first thing that I think of, that I offer my day to when I wake up? And do I give him gratitude for the day, for all of its blessings, trials and sorrows, triumphs and tribulations? that are his gift to me this day? Have I offered him thanksgiving? Have I done this? Have I ordered my life at morning, noon, and evening to the divine will? Because that divine will, that will of power that God has, is a power to set us free, to free us from sins. And this is something, if we truly want it, we have to have it in our minds. We have to habituate ourselves to constantly be thinking about God's gift for me, for us, and live it out and giving him gratitude. Gratitude at every opportunity. If we begin to have this habit, if we don't already have it, if you begin to have this habit, you will start to see a transformation in your life. If you are constantly in a state of gratitude and thanksgiving, For the power of God's grace, your life changes. It's a mysterious thing. You don't have to do a lot. You just have to have the right state of mind and not be forgetful of God's mercy. If we do this, if we put first things first, we cling to him who is the center of our life. Then in all of our turmoils, we can put them in the right order. And we see that some of the things that we are so concerned about are specks. Specks of dust. Compared to the glory of God. And in fact, compared to the true battle that we are engaged in, which is a power against principalities and powers, as St. Paul says, a power of a fight against the world and the rulers of this world, a fight against all those things that distract us from having our will completely united to the divine will. This is the true battle that we are fighting. And when we can see that clearly, then we know that we have the right mind. And when our mind is right, our heart is right. And if our heart is right, then our life is right. And as we live rightly, rejoicing in that power of God's forgiveness and clemency, 
We come and offer thanksgiving and gratitude so that one day we too may live in heaven with God the Father and the Holy Spirit reigning together with the Son forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.